welcome, welcome to Hard Point here on a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Friday night. Just got done with a few four matches on the CDL that were great games to watch for the most part. And I'm going to be giving my instant reactions here and right now. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to be giving about two minutes to each game, going over who did well, who did bad, and just the overall reaction to it coming off it. So first off, we got the Seattle Surge versus the London Royal Ravens. If you see on your screen, a very, actually very balanced game in general. Two, team, two players on each team going positive. The real standout in this game was the meta switch to the SMG. As we saw, um, Pred finally go off in normal Pred fashion with a 1.31. We've been waiting to see that go off. He had an 84.64. Then we had Sasib at a 1.1. He's still able to fry, and he dealt the most damage. If you look on the Seattle Surge scoreboard, this is a winning formula. If Pred can get the most kills, uh, go off. Sib dealing the damage. Um, accuracy staying around a 1. And if those three things can happen, Max X Factor doesn't have to play as big of a role. Uh, but when Mac goes off, those other factors can go off. But we saw a perfectly formed Seattle game here. Uh, they didn't play perfect, but this is how the Seattle formula works. When we go to the Lone Royal Raven side, a uh, very slow start for them. But throughout the match, it was very even. I I did not think... I, I thought this was going to go to game five. I just saw in the beginning, they just controlled the hard point. Hotel, the surge did. Going over to the S&D, we expected a loss from the Seattle boys. They lost. London Royal Ravens still continuing their dominance. Surge got off to a 2-0 start on that S&D, but then the Ravens just pushed through. They were able to get the clutch points. They were they were the clutch team, not the Surge, which is how they got those wins because there was about four rounds that the Surge just kind of threw away. Uh, the control was hotly contested, very even, and then that last hard point was very even. So even though it was a 3-1, the this was a very even match. Going forward, if we ever saw the Surge against the Ravens again, it, it would be another close game, probably go to game five. Uh, so in this game, we just we now have seen the Ravens kind of come down a little bit from where we thought, and the surge have gone up. Going to the Minnesota Rocker versus the Florida Mirrorneers game, uh, there's unfortunately no overall stats here as the CDL messed up and haven't put them on yet. But what I can tell you is, number one, Afro was one of the top names of the day. He was with the London Royal Ravens last year and the year prior, and he got traded to the Minnesota Rocker, or no, he signed with the Minnesota Rocker. Um, these stats are not, you know, attached and not do a 2.5 throughout the whole game. So, but I'm just showing you Afro here played amazing. Uh, again, we're seeing the SMG role actually be able to play their role the right way with the TAC being, you know, looking back, the I said before the TAC is like almost as good as the M4, just a little worse. But no, playing, I played about four hours of the CDL Moshpit yesterday, and the TAC just does not hit like the M4 does, This, which is allowing the SMG role to really control the game in the way that we expect them to. And throughout this whole match, Afro was literally in every single thing. There's some, uh, what's his name? A study from the one of the announcers in the CDL, he said Afro is one of the best uh, like classic SMG players right now. Or he said he's the best. I'm not going to go that far, but I've always been super impressed with Afro when he was with the London Royal Ravens throughout the years. I felt like he was that consistent slayer and the person pushing that team forward when things weren't going well. And I was ho I was really hoping he'd actually do well with the Minnesota Rocker, and he has been. He's performed very well this match. They pulled off a 3-1 victory. Honestly, uh, things did get a little tight here in the middle. Uh, throughout the whole match, it was very tight, actually. Recalling back, uh, the, the Minnesota Rocker did just pull away on that fortress, but throughout the whole match, they felt pretty even. Uh, we saw some great um, co contributions from the new Brack and Vickel on the Minnesota, on the Florida Mutineers. Sorry, um, not much else to say. I mean, we are starting to see everything start to fall into place as this is kind of like that week two of the NFL game, but for the CDL, we're like now we're starting to see some of the more. Uh, some of these teams actually play the way that we expected them to. I think Minnesota is starting to come down a little bit, just like Ravens have come down from our expectations. 
They did pull out the victory 3-1, but it was very close. And I'm excited to see what happens from now on. So next up, this is the match that really blew everyone away. I had my hot seat match. I had my hot seat players and uh, yeah, video a couple days ago. I put Priesta as, if I recall, number two out of the three hot seats. The hot seats aren't a hot seat for like, I think they should be fired. I th the hot seat is you just need to perform better. And we saw Priesta really contribute today. On the other hand, my number one hot seat was on the other squad, which is Spart. And you can see from his numbers, he did not live up to that hot seat that he had. The New York Subliners, they have Kismet, the Bulldog on their team here. He, was a rookie. he wasn't a rookie last year, but he came back into the scene again, kind of like a rookie-ish. And they, as a team, took on his name and bullied the LAG around. Just look at these stats. Not a single person got a .8. Um, this is much more of what I expected from the Subliners. Priesta, Kismet, Skies, Hydra, four contributors, four great players. After that week one, I was shocked to see them do so poorly, but seeing them perform here like this, all above a one is nasty game. This was not even close. I'm glad to see Priesta perform, but I need, I need to go back to Spart real quick before I go to the next, the last match of the day, which is, I said in the video, with Spart performing the way he did, as long as they're getting those victories, it was like a 1-1 um, you know, they were 1-1 last weekend. And I said, as long as they are pulling those victories, it's okay if there are some players falling behind, as a victory will cure any illness. But here we see Spart did not contribute again. I mean, none of the team did very well, but he again was the bottom player. We saw a, a very important round, uh, not round, f not round five, but I, I think LAG had five wins to... Uh, four wins on the S&D round. Spart missed two easy snipe shots. Just things like that. He really needs to contribute in those moments. And he might be a headliner on our hot seats again next week just due to this performance. Last and certainly not least, the best match by far in this during this day was the Atlanta phase <clears throat> versus the Toronto Ultra. Again, not shocked again. I'm not shocked again. The... We just saw two Titans bow, go head to head, switching blow for blow. Amazing match. The Ultra are going to spike up in my power rankings this week. I can guarantee you that. I was so impressed with both teams. When you're watching this match, this is the type of match you need to go back, watch the VOD, and just appreciate what you're watching. Because it was really two just very clinical team teams going back to head, back to back. Uh, Toronto were able to pull up this time, strapping, uh, str snapping what was like a 10 win streak for the phase. <clears throat> the phase really have had their number throughout the throughout the CDL, but they were finally able to get the victory. Uh, was it because of the new players? Possibly. You know they've lost Bance, they've lost not Kleenex, they lost uh, Freak. Don't remember his name. But anyways, they lost two players. Standy comes in from the rocker. Standy played out of his mind, a 1.35. Every match, every round I was watching him go off. He was making very influential plays on the map. Over on the Atlanta phase side, we, like we said before, with the the Seattle Surge and the Rocker, we saw the SMGs start to slay out. We still have not seen the phase SMGs slay out yet in this map, in this game. We see a, a 0.86 from Simp and a 0.71 from Abizi. That is not going to cut it at all. I will say in the first map, Abizi was making some influential plays on that hard point. But Sully McGinn, the MVP, best player in Call of Duty for the last few years, uh, even though he hasn't won the last, you know, the, last year Simp did. Oh, sorry, two years ago. Uh, just when you watch him, he just looks so good. Sully is the best, and he here again, 1.36, keeping them in the game. Um, you know, is this brings up the question: Are the phase missing our cities? I don't know, but we will see going forward. I, you know, if you're a phase fan, do not be worried. The phase look great still; they're still performing. It's just Toronto looks very good at, at this point. So, with that, let's look to the schedule very quickly for just tomorrow's schedule. And then a phase versus the Las Vegas Legion. I'm expecting an easy 3-0. Um, cannot easy. Vegas can perform, but 
expect Atlanta to be able to perform here. Uh, they're going to come off that... You, you saw the players' cams after that match. They are pissed. Absolutely pissed. And they're going to come in and swipe the boards here, I believe. Next up, we got that Optic Texas versus the London Royal Ravens. Ravens coming off that loss. They feel fired up. But Texas is a better team. Texas will win. Next up, Subliners Boston. This is the match to watch. Um, just in terms of, if you're a CDL, just a full, pure CDL fan, just like to know the team, how teams are doing, this is going to be a very big sign of how Boston is as a team and how the Subliners actually are. If we see like a 3-1 victory for the Subliners, throw everything out the water, throw all the books out on both these teams as Boston probably aren't as good as they are and Subliners are now eking up, scratching and crawling their way up the power rankings. The last match of the day is Florida LA Thieves. This could be a snooze fest. If the Thieves play the way they have been, uh, Florida's good, just not quite as good. This could be an easy 3-1 for the Thieves. But yeah, this is the match. Circle it. I think both these matches will both be good, actually, to watch. They'll be fun. You know, a lot of Optic Texas fans, a lot of FaZe fans, they'll be fun. There'll be a good viewership there. But keep your eyes on that one. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to like and subscribe and watch some other videos from Midnight Release.